Welcome to the Emerald City. Seattle. Washington. Did you go to the University of Washington? No. Coming up on this episode. You know that term, finding a needle in a haystack? I found it. Fraser Crane. I've been waiting for this train to come and take me away Well, I can hear around the corner, it'll be your end and they say Well, hey, hey, hey And I've been waiting for this train to come and take me all night Well, I've been sleeping in the station, I've been busking for donations, alright Well, yeah, alright Seattle. Welcome to episode four of Well Over Par. This is the Well Over Par bus. Ryan Sullivan at the helm. The only one with a class four license. So, yeah, that's why he's driving. I agree, sir. I agree. Don't don't finger me, sir. That's you're being rude. Welcome to Seattle, ladies and gentlemen. Well, more particularly, uh, Tacoma. It's just outside Seattle here, but Chambers Bay, course number one. We've got a great show lined up. Uh, we're, of course, golfing uh, this course, which they're using for the U.S. Open 2015, just saying. Uh, tomorrow, day off, we're doing a Brews and Views tour. Check out some local microbreweries. Then we've got a Sounders game right after that. It's pretty good. We might get some chowder as well. I've heard the chowder here is delicious. The chowder. And then, coming up on day three. Oh, we're going Washington National. That's the uh, University of Washington Husky course. Our boy James Lepp went there, so we have to check it out and rock the UW purple, of course. And the best part is, the loser of this episode gets to make out with a fish. Ryan won yeah. his first ever episode last time, so I am out for vengeance. I want to win this. I don't want to make out with a fish. I'm on a pretty hot winning streak. So if you're betting good money, throw it this way. I'm wearing my Canada red. It's go time. Signature hole at Palm, uh, almost at Palm Bay. <laughs> Apparently I want a Palm Bay. I'm just going to hit the ball. That's so good. Adam's gone AWOL with his first shot. Like I said, smart money. <laughs> yeah. It's fairway driving. Fairway driving, you put it off the tee box. Hey, it went straight. It skipped. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Third hole at Chambers Bay. Ryan's already up on me by one stroke. Not too sure how that happened, but regardless, I'm not too worried about it. We have reached our first par three, which means a par three challenge. So before we came down, I picked up a bunch of Hawaiian gear. I propose to you that the loser of this hole, yeah. the following hole, which I think is a par four, you have to walk the entirety of the hole in just Hawaiian gear. So essentially boxers, hula skirt, coconut bra, and a lay. So you walk the fourth hole, the next, yeah. the next hole? Yeah. Okay. It's got a Hawaiian theme, the sand. The ocean view. It's tropical. Yeah, very nice. So you accept? I accept. Oh my god. That's my mulligan. That's my mulligan, ah. everybody. <laughs> Should have said no mulligans. Huh. I've already used my mulligan. So it's going to have to be a one shot wonder here. A little nervous now. <laughs> I don't want to be known as the guy who was in a hula suit. Hula skirt. <laughs> in the same hole that Tiger Woods plays in two years. You picked up the male style, the hula suit. The hula suit. <laughs> Complete with cummerbund and coconuts. <laughs> oh, man. Set. Short, short, short. Ah! Yes. Roll! Roll, baby! Keep going, <laughs> keep going, keep going! Hard! Hard! Damn! Hula skirt. <laughs> You 
just saw it. I won the KP, and that means... I'm enjoying the ventilation. <laughs> it's fantastic. I've never felt upper body support like this before. It's it's tremendous. You should be happy. You just got a free Halloween costume out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, pretty sure it's meant for a two-year-old. <laughs> well, it works. Uh, yeah. And the best part is the fourth hole is one of the most challenging on the course. A huge dog leg uphill called Hazard's Ascent. Perfect, because this is a walking hazard right here. Uh, you ready to do this? I'm ready. I'm very happy I packed underwear today. My prosthetic mind Secrets in That's why I pay to be good. You have to look like an idiot on YouTube in a hula skirt. It's funny that it was his best drive of the day. Free and easy, baby. Free and easy. Whatever. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. See, I couldn't really squeeze in on the club because I have some sharp plastic fake coconuts. Just edging right in there. New from Travis Matthew. The summer collection. Scatter, so I wish you would Give me my last uh, couple shots with the coconuts and skirt. I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna miss it a little bit. It breathes easily, it's nice. There's no need for deodorant in this. You just use Mother Nature to soothe and ooze. Shoot the ball. Okay. Well, see, I'm not all... Hey, look at me. I'm wearing big boy clothes. Uh, I got to put clothes back on. So hopefully I can play better. Big boy clothes. The weird part is he didn't want to put them back on. No, I didn't. I didn't. The skirt breathed. It was like wearing a grassy kimono. I have a wrist injury. That's why I'm playing bad. A wrist injury. It's believable, as one guy once said. Yeah. He's single again. Just throwing that out there. Single like a fox. With a hurt wrist. That's why I'm single. Again. <laughs> I, there just you go. made sense. It all comes together. Cause that's not me. And your eyes, they roll. I'm 110 in. Rather than use a pitching wedge like a logical person, I'm gonna go for it. I feel if I miss the shot, Ryan still has a chance at winning. I feel bad for him. The screaming starts. And there's no just showed you my whole diabolical plan to let Ryan back into the game. Take a risky shot, go right for the pin. You notice I'm not walking to the pin with a putter in hand. Why? Oh, that's why. 110 out. I believe this is what you call an eagle. Just gonna, mm, that's nice. How do you like my new club? Just made the turn here at uh, Chambers Bay. I'm up on Ryan by a couple of strokes, but uh, more importantly, he went to get some snacks. Shouldn't have left his bag open. <laughs> oh, golf's fun. Alright, we're at the turn. Time for again Twitter at the turn. This one's from Samantha at Digital ARTX. Alright. <laughs> Sitting here wondering if your guys' golf game representations of your skill level in the bedroom. My answer? No. I'm actually half decent in the half decent in the bedroom. Unlike golf, I don't take mulligans in the bathroom either. Or bedroom. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> nope, you got it right the first time, I'm sure. Oh. Uh, this one's from at Trob022. Trevor, how often do you guys get wasted on the course off air? I'd like to see that more often. Trevor, why do you want to see us drunk? That's a weird fetish, and I don't want to be a part of it. Keep watching the show, Trevor. Thank you. The nicest part about this course is it's a link style course, meaning there's no water, which suits Ryan's game because it's true, right? Huh? Exactly, he agrees. So perfect and uh bosoms. Shaya!
This next hole, named after the movie that launched a horrible actor's career, it's Eagle Eye, everybody. Let's get it started. That you don't recognize. I'm just up like a boy's been out all night. John Stamos! Interesting fact about John Stamos. Jonah Hill and P. Diddy were in a movie called Get Him to the John Stamos. So leave my clothes here. <laughs> oh, that was loud in my ear. It's all right. It's a good shot. I, I rolled off the back. I totally backfired. I can't hear anything right now. <laughs> you didn't put that up to my ear or something, did you? No, I put it next to my ear like this and hit it. <laughs> I can't hear now. How much did you buy at the toy store? What's wrong with you? You got a right to believe in me. Nice ball, buddy. Thanks. Really good drive. Bay's in the books. Good game. Good game. Adam's up by a couple. The day off is coming up next. The accommodation for Well Over Par's Seattle episode, episode four, were generously provided by Pan Pacific Hotels and Resorts. Before booking your next Seattle trip, make sure to log on to Pan Pacific. Dot com. What up, everybody? Welcome to the day off. Ryan's down by a couple of strokes after day one. Not really a surprise, right, Ryan? No. That's what I thought. So we got to drown at Soros a little bit. We're checking out a couple micro breweries here in Seattle. Start with Fremont Brewing. These guys are beauties. They start their own bourbon beer. Delicious. I've never had it before. Bourbon infused beer. Infused. So we're going to try that, try a couple other drinks, and uh, let's start the tour. Cheers, buddy. Let's do it. Okay, so here with Matt Linsicum at the Fremont Brewery. Now, Matt, you have a bourbon infused beer. It's delicious. Thank you. Can you please explain the process a little bit? And we'll go check out a little bit for the bourbon as we go. Okay. Uh, so over oh. here we have some of our barrels, and then right here we see the stack of barrels. Uh, what we do is uh, with our barrel-aged beers, we have bourbon beers and wine-aged beers, wine barrel-aged beers. For the bourbon side of it, we have two beers: the winter beer, the abominable, and our stout, an imperial oatmeal stout. You can stick your nose in there and smell in that. This is called a bung, so just. It's delicious. You stick your head, your nose in the bung and smell it. It's a bung? <laughs> bung. Oh, okay. A bung, right. I was going to say it's going to appeal to a lot of people in Vancouver if it's a, a bung, bung, but... We get these 50 to 20 year old bourbon barrels uh, out of Kentucky within a couple weeks. When we get them, then we fill them up with our uh, winter beers and we age them two, three years. And then when we're ready to uh, bottle them, we will take them out and then blend them with younger versions of the beer, so we get the perfect vintage. Oh yeah, see now we're cooking. This is the most recent uh, release we have, it's called the Kentucky Dark Star. Important question, can we keep this? <laughs> yes, you can keep that. There you go, sure. golf and free As beer. It's a measure of peace between our country and yours. <laughs> <laughs> Candy line is a lot of fun for us. It's something that we've wanted to do since we started, uh, but it's a big process. It's very expensive. It took us three years to actually put this whole system together. Um, but now that it's here, we can't stop making canned beer. Well, you um, shouldn't. The, I know we shouldn't. Uh, the demand is huge. So we uh, can currently two beers year round. This is our IPA that we're canning today in the yellow one. Over yep. there in the dark blue, that's the pale. Uh, it's a universal pale, inner of an IPA, and then a seasonal. Okay. So we have four seasonals, one for each season. We got two more breweries to go. Matt, so far, you're ranked number one in our books. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a great time. 
Cheers. Check it out, Fremont Brewing, because beer matters. Brewery number two, the Schooner Exact. And you know what? The beer's still delicious. I love Seattle. This is a great off day. Yeah, you'll notice a nautical theme in the logo there. Up, oh, nice and tight. It's beautiful. Uh, there were three families that came over and discovered Seattle. They came over on boats, as you do. Uh, the Yeslers, the Maynards. Wine gum fortune. Not, Not true, true, but there you go. Not true. And the Denny's. And uh, the Denny's came over in the Schooner Exact. They opened up this brewery and some fine fast food restaurant chains. Half of that's true. Not even half of that's true. But the guy who did open this, well played, sir. You make delicious beer. Mm-hmm. Your bacon and sausage combo is delicious. Last stop of the brewery tour, unfortunately, but fortunately, it is the Georgetown Brewery and it's delicious, home of the Hoyas. Not true. Not, Patrick Ewing did not play here. This no. is a brewery. True. What's a Hoya? I don't know. What kind of beer is this? This beer is a Manny. A Nanny Bean Manny. Started with a Rogers, now we're on to a Manny. It's a pretty cool system they have here. There's like seven or eight different beers, lighter to darker, and uh, you try them all out, and they all have crazy names, and you get drunk. Is that a light butterscotch scent? Stop eating so much pudding. <laughs> you think everything smells like butterscotch. It's a good year nonetheless. It's a good year. Cheers. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Here with Dan Moore, Chief Outings Officer for Evergreen Escapes. Now, Dan, we just had an awesome brewery tour. You're running the show. In 30 seconds or less, three awesome things about the three breweries we hit. So we started with Fremont Brewing, probably one of the most sustainable breweries in the, the Pacific Northwest. Number two was Schooner Exact. Every single beer is named after some historical component of Seattle. And finally, we finished off with Georgetown Brewing. Georgetown is the second largest microbrewery in the nation, definitely one of the largest in our region. It was an awesome time. It's a great tour. Where can people find you? www.evergreenescapes.com. All right, day off continues. I'm getting a little hungry, so we decided to hit up Pike Place Chowder, world famous for their chowder, hence the name. Sully, what chowder have you opted for? I'm going for the seafood chowder. I'm down by a couple strokes, just kind of maybe getting a taste for things, I suppose. Confidence, as you can see, at an all-time high for tomorrow. I'm keeping it pretty vanilla. I'm going with the clam chowder. Excellent choice. Excellent choice. So uh, let's enjoy this. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, these guys have won awards, so let's dig in. And the tension's cranking up a notch here at Pike Place Market. It's Adam with the New England chowder. Look at that creamy concoction. Beautiful bacon slipping down the throat. He's attacking this like a true pro from first minute to final whistle. The intent glare, though, from Ryan Sullivan with the seafood chowder. He's switching it up. Again, mixing it with those clams, with those prawns, with the crab. It is surely a winning combination if only he can keep his head through until the 90th minute. The steely glaze back from Adam. He thinks he's got the winner right at the last. Has Sullivan got enough? He cranks up the tempo. This could be a fine finish right at the end. Cross comes over from the spoon in the mouth and Sullivan thinks he's got it. Adam though, has he got the equaliser? There can surely be only one winner and that is the chowder itself because it is so good here in Seattle. A very enjoyable day off here in Seattle, wrapping things up at the Clink CenturyLink Field. An excellent game. The soccer game was 0 0, so it was high scoring and proving why I love soccer. Nil nil, my friend. Nil nil. I love soccer. Yes, I wish I had that score because right now I'm trailing Adam uh, by a few after Chambers Bay. Big day tomorrow. Absolutely. Washington National, a great course, and uh, we're going to check it out tomorrow. If Sully loses, he gets to make out with a fish in public. That's right, a fish. Wouldn't be the first time. I'll see you tomorrow. Coming up, more Seattle goodness. You're watching Well Over Par on WellOverPar.com.
The itinerary for Well Over Par Seattle episode, episode 4, was carefully orchestrated by the good people at Green Rubino. Before your next trip to beautiful Seattle, Washington, make sure you log on to greenrubino.com. We're at Washington National Golf Club. This is where Kicker was born. You like our shoes? Yes, James Lepp, Washington Husky alumni. He suggested this course looks amazing. We're both pretty big Pac-12 fans as well. Force leading by a couple at the moment. What's the strategy going into today? Indeed. Uh, pretty simple actually. Win. Um, again, I'm already winning, so you're gonna have to mount some sort of amazing comeback. Um, weather is a little, a little cloudier than normal, so we might be playing our first ever well over par game in the rain. But these cigars are delicious. Unbelievable. <laughs> Worth every penny, $3. See it? Yeah, you're Sandy. Come join me, will you? Yes, I will join you. I'm golfing in the rain. Like a Sinatra and all. Susie is going to be furious with you. <laughs> mom, don't Ryan, watch this. Ryan don't Sullivan look at me, Mom. Smoking? Don't look at me. I don't smoke. I actually don't smoke. This tastes awful. Mmm. <coughs> this is cancer. <laughs> Mulligan, one, bunk, two, bunk, three, out, four, five, more, six. I wrote down a seven, I just assumed. Why? Because you said I gotta stop getting triple bogeys and start getting double bogeys. I got a six. There's a par four. I know. And I got I, a six. I wrote down a seven because you said par I have four, to- Par four, a six is a double bogey. I know, but you said on the green, I have to stop getting triple bogeys. I have to start getting double bogeys. I know, that was a joke because I'm horrible at golf. I could have said I'm going to start getting quadruple bogeys and get triple bogeys. Well, that's not very realistic. You see my comedy? Michael Phelps. <laughs> oh my god. I'm not even upset. That was. I'm just. I'm proud that I could be in the presence of that. As you just witnessed, I trained a career long putt. That was lucky, but awesome. That was a good putt. That was a good putt. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it looks like I might not be making out with a fish. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, luckily, back home, I'm single, so when somebody sees this, they're not going to be like, Ew, I can't kiss you anymore, because I don't have anybody to kiss right now. We've reached our first par three, which means par three challenge time. So, uh -huh. I want to introduce the cinnamon challenge. You might have seen it on YouTube, it's hilarious. All you got to do is eat a spoonful of cinnamon, or try to, because it's not going to happen. It's that easy. Adam's ball <laughs> did not make the ladies tease. Uh, if I don't get this, the show's over, I give up. Oh, he actually is going to stick it right at the pin. Ah! There we go. There we go. Rarely do I win the final wager, but I win the little wagers, the PKs. The PKs are closest to the bin, the PK soup pans. So, I can't speak English. Namaha. We're on the sixth hole now, tee box. One of us has a taste for cinnamon. It's not me. They taste for cancer with those cigars. Mm, they taste awful. <laughs> Let's get to the cinnamon, my friend. This is gonna suck, but I, I'm a man of my word. Damn right. Ryan had to wear the uh, hula skirt. I'll do the cinnamon. Oh, that's loaded. That is fully loaded. Don't do this at home. We're professionally trained.
that's there, it's on. Yeah. Gotta get there though. Oh, that's not even close. Front night at Washington National was awesome, but the back nine is blowing it out of the water. This is like really, honestly, one of the top five back nines, nine hole stretches I've ever played of golf. I'm about to approach the 18th hole here at Washington National, aka the final exam, and uh, Unfortunately, Ryan's gonna lose. It's not unfortunate at all. I'm actually quite happy about it. There is a possibility. We still have to play the 18th. Yeah. Like you could get a hole in one on this par four and I could quadruple bogey. Possible. Possible. Anything is possible. But you know what? This isn't a bad thing because I've been running low on omega-3. Oh, that's right. You're gonna make out with a fish tomorrow. That's right. Well, time to celebrate, everyone. Woo! Happy graduation, buddy. <laughs> That's how you finish a round. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you so much. Well played, well played. Oh yeah, that's right. Victory. You only got a six on that hole, so you're improving. Yeah, it's getting better. Uh, uh, you excited to make out with a fish? Would you be excited to make out with a fish? I would not, but you're <laughs> doing it regardless, and let's go. Probably wondering why I have a giant grin on my face because I beat Ryan again at golf. But this time the punishment's fantastic because it's sexual. Hopefully that can air on TV. Uh, so pretty much what Ryan has to do now is make out with a fish for 15 seconds. Yeah, this like, is tongue and all. Yeah, this is Meg Ryan. Uh, that's what we're gonna call her. And um, just for the record. Ladies out there, I don't usually kiss like this, but I'm going all out on this baby. Uh, go big or go home, and I'm gonna come down with some sort of hepatitis. So again, it pays to be good at golf. This guy right here does not pay to be bad at golf. You think Ryan would have learned his lesson? Oh. So let's do it. Ryan is about to make out with a fish in front of 50 people in downtown Seattle. Woo! <laughs> I can't stop laughing. That I know I paintballed you. I know I made you jump off a bridge. But this is the best punishment we've ever done. <laughs> Fantastic. The fish's tongue was barbed. My <laughs> tongue is bleeding. But I'm a lover, so this punishment came naturally the to me. The best part is, that this thing's already on YouTube. There was like 50 people with camera phones going wild. You gave the tourists a show. <laughs> I did. <laughs> tourist attraction, man making out with fish. Absolutely. It was awesome, and again, just proves why you gotta be good at golf. Anyways, easily my favorite episode ever. That was fantastic. Thanks for tuning in to Well Over Par. Much more on welloverpar.com, and stay tuned for future episodes. Again, everyone, Ryan, Fish Lover Sullivan. I'm gonna throw up. So it's Adam with the New England clam chowder. Look at that creamy bacon. Syrupy, beautiful, slipping down through the throat. You can see in his eyes what it means to be taking on this challenge at Pike Place Market. Ryan with the seafood chowder. Beautiful little prawn there. Again, sizing up the opposition, slipping it down. That, my friend, is a winning combination. They're going at it, hammer and prawn tongs. It's the bacon against the crab, but there can be only one winner. <laughs>